Hi, this is Matt Allington. I had an interesting question during the week about values and has one value and I thought I would make a video just to step through um, what these functions do and just hopefully provide some information and make it easier to understand. So I've broken this video into the topics you can see. I'm going to start off by talking about just naked columns in measures and then I'm going to show you how to use min and max to extract a single value and then we'll move on to these other topics values has one value and selected value. Okay so let's start off with naked columns. So I've got a couple of um, visuals here. This is a card and this one here is a table and I've written a measure. Now this measure is not valid and um, so as you can see here in the measure my me measure is product list price. So this comes from the products table. So let's just have a look at this in the data model first of all. So we have a products table. The products table has got a list price and the products table is joined to the sales table and I have a total sales measure in the sales table. So in this visual here, if I remove this measure that doesn't work, you can see I've got all the products, product key, product name and then the total sales. So the product key and product name are coming from the products table, total sales from the sales table. When I put this measure in here, it throws an error and there you can see there's a problem here. And the issue is that I'm trying to refer to this naked column. Now you're allowed to refer to naked columns when you're doing a calculated column, but you're not allowed to refer to naked columns inside a regular measure like this. And so this is an illegal formula. And if I want to extract a price list value from the list price column, I could use a trick. I could say, give me the maximum value that you find in this column. Now with the max value selected, you can see that in the rows in my table, the product key and product name, there is only one value for the product list price and therefore the maximum returns that product list price. But when I get to the grand total row, there are no filters on individual products and therefore this is the maximum list price of any product. I could also change this from a max to a min. And when I do this, There'll be no changes inside the table because there's still a single product selected, but the total line in this table changes as does the item here in the card. So using min and max like this are a bit of a trick to be able to refer to a column inside a regular measure. You would do it this way when you've got a numeric value. Uh, in fact, there's something that I learned uh, last week and that is that you're able to refer to a text column using min and max as well. So for example, if I go category, min category, it returns the first category, alphabetical order. And if I turn max, turn this into max category, it returns the last category in alphabetical order. And so in this sense, it's a bit like um, first non-blank, last non-blank. Okay, but for this exercise, we're looking at the list price. Okay, so we've talked about naked columns and min and max to extract a single value, but let's talk about how values works and more specifically how it doesn't work. So the values function returns a table. That's one of the features of the values function. And if I put values here, values of the list price, this will return a table containing all of the values of the list prices with the current filters applied. So on this row here, it should return 33.64. However, at the grand total row, there are no filters on the products table. There are 397 products. And so therefore at this point within my visual, this values table that gets produced will actually have 397 values. So let's look what happens when I click OK there. I get an error message and the error is because I'm trying to put these values into a table when it's in the rows there are no issues when it's in the grand total row there is a big issue and I can actually test this by doing a little test measure count rows of this type because it's a table I can count how many rows of in that table and you can see that now it works so it's the values function returns a single row table when it's within the table here and at the grand total row actually it's 121 
um, individual product list prices. And that's because some of the product list prices are repeated throughout the database. So I'm not allowed to refer to values in this way because when the values is at the grand total row, it throws an error. And that's where has one value comes in. So has one value is a bit like an error checking. It's a bit like if error in Excel. It's preventing the error occurring in the instance that values doesn't have a filter. And so the way you use it is you go if has one value of the list price column. So in other words, if the list price has a single value, then it's okay to give me values because there will only be a single value and it's fine. However, if it's at the grand total row, the default behavior is blank. So I'll just leave that one blank. And so when it gets to the grand total row, or in other words, when there is more than one value in the values table, it'll return blank instead. And so when I do that, the values function works. It returns the value of the product price for the individual product. And at the grand total row, it returns um, a blank. And so lastly, moving on to selected value. Selected value is a new function and I'm going to comment out this code and selected value is actually a shortcut way of writing if has one value. So when I type selected value of the product's price list, that's equivalent. Is that correct? Equivalent to if has one value. And so if I write that formula and come back here, you'll see that this works. You've got a blank over here. When I select an individual item, that item returns the price. When I have nothing selected, it returns blank. Hopefully that's helped demystify the values if has one value and selected value.